Hi, Calvary. As we continue on our walk with Jesus, uh, we find him entering into the city of Jerusalem for the triumphal entry. And, and we're going to be looking at this from Matthew, uh, Matthew's perspective in chapter 20, 21. So I'd like to read these few verses uh, with us this morning. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken to the prophet. Say to daughter of Zion, See your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest of heaven. And when Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. If you can imagine, there were thousands of people who were pouring into the city of Jerusalem in preparation and celebration of Passover. Jerusalem was teeming with energy and life. And it was at this moment that Jesus was to enter Jerusalem to make public his claim as Messiah, Savior, and King. He came in fulfill fulfillment of prophecy. But prior to his entering Jerusalem, there had been many thousands who had witnessed Jesus' miracles and his teachings. And they had come to believe that he would be the future king of Jerusalem, not as what we might think him to be, but as an earthly king, someone who would overthrow Rome. But that wasn't Jesus' intentions for entering Jerusalem. He came really to fulfill Zechariah 9.9. This is what, what it says. It says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. See your king comes to you, righteous and having salvation, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Jesus' intention was to ride into that city, not as a warring king, but as someone who would come gentle and meek and in humility. He would come as a lowly servant, someone that would enter the city with love and mercy. He was there to bring salvation. He was there to lay down his life for them and for all humanity. Jesus had no intentions of entering that city to conquer a nation or, or to take the rulership of, of being king, but he came to conquer the hearts and minds of men. He didn't come to provide temporal peace. No, he came to provide peace, everlasting peace, through his Father that we all might experience in our daily lives. The people had come with, with great hope that Jesus would liberate them from Roman occupation. And so they were celebrating his entrance in the city by taking their coats off their backs and cutting branches from the trees and, and throwing them on the, on the road before him in submission to him as king. It was their way of saying, we are ready to receive you as Messiah of our people. And they began to shout to him, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest of heaven. In essence, what they were saying was, save us, deliver us. We acknowledge you as the righteous Davidic Messiah and King. And we offer our praise to you as our Lord and coming Savior. However, in a few short days, uh, Jesus wouldn't meet up to their expectations. They would see him no longer as the Messiah, the one who would take over the rule of their city. And so he would become rejected by them. I think what this story means to me is first and foremost that Jesus keeps his promises. That from the beginning of time when sin entered the world, that he had a plan 
that he had a purpose for mankind and that he would come to rescue us, rescue the world from our own sin. And that he would come willingly, intentionally, and in great love lay down his life for our sin, for my sin, so that we might enjoy the grace and forgiveness of God. But he also came as Messiah. He came as our Messiah, our deliverer, our rescuer from the power of sin. And for that reason, Jesus is worthy to be called King. He is worthy to be served. He is worthy that we submit our lives to him, to give our hearts to him, to recognize him as our Lord and Savior. How about you? Have you considered Jesus as your King? Have you considered why he came? Have you allowed him to be the savior and king of your life, to be your deliverer, your rescuer, to be your salvation? You know he came in love, in mercy, in grace, so that we might know him in relationship. He is worthy of our praise and adoration. He is worthy of our hosannas. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord.